Yes. Oh, that good old coffee. It's good. Mm-hmm. Um, we need to up. We need to upgrade the studio. We do. We were just talking. We've about We've been talking that. about this for a long time. And no action. We need books. We need murals. We need fan mail. Yeah. We need. I'm afraid this doesn't show the true character of who we are. No. What's going on? What are you talking about? Sorry, so so you sent me this you sent me this message about anti role models. Okay. Okay? And I, it hit me like role models is one of the most important things that we talk about on this mm-hmm. on this podcast, on this show. It's more than a podcast to me. And uh, you talked about anti role model, role models. I thought this would be a good opportunity to talk about anti role models, but actually let's do a full episode on role models. And let's call this the three types of role models everybody needs in their career. Okay. I want to unpack I like each it. type I like of, it. I want to unpack each role model. Okay. The nephew has a lot of lot of notes. I got I like notes. This. I got notes. No, we have this. So we have a we have a system. We're getting a system down now where I keep this doc as we do the show. And so like if there's things that you say or we say or whatever, I mark it down as a clip so then the video crew knows like oh pull it out. So then, so then Dan or Gonzo doesn't have to listen for 30 minutes to then pick out the good clip. Woo! Look at that. So huh? he's, sa- so he's saving you time, GJ. But no, no, I had this conversation with Dan. Shout out, okay. shout out, uh, young, young Dan, Dan, young Dan, young, young Dan, young Dan. The other day, I said, look, I said I want to pull out the clips and I want to write the headlines. Yeah. But if you have the mindset of I'm going to do this for you, this is your job. Mm-hmm. It's, you're never going to learn it. Never. So learn I'm going to I'm going to show you some of the things that I think would be good clips and headlines. But I want you to take this oh, okay. and then take it with it. Okay. So that's how we got the clip. So like, if you go, there's a great. uh, He sent me this great clip today, which is like, you know, one that we wrote down last time, which is the tell, uh, the tell in hiring, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, about management or whatever, whatever the heck it was. That that was your how to spot your future leaders. How to spot your future leaders, right? So I wrote that. That 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 was too good. That one we should have charged for. We should charge. That was too good. I'm gonna post that one later. Yeah. Um, Behind the paywall. So this is this this episode. is about role models. I want to talk about the three of them. I, actually, I want to. I want you to do most of the talking. I do what I do, which is interview you. Okay. Um, okay. So let's talk about role models. Number one, let's talk about role models in general, mm-hmm. the good kind, mm-hmm. right? Um, I think, I think this is the mistake that most people make, which is everybody wants role models, but they say, DC, I want you to be my role model. No, um, sorry. When can we get coffee? Yeah, impossible. Uh, when can I? When can yeah, we yeah. get lunch? Right. Mm-hmm. And you're never gonna have a time. So I think the biggest mistake people make with role models. We should talk about why you need them first. Yes, I was going to ask you. Go ahead. Let's why talk do we, about why, why, why do we need role models? Well, how, and how did you get, come okay. to learn about the let role me answer, models? Let me answer this question in a couple different ways. One of them is how I would have answered it a couple years ago, which is uh, well, because you need to you need to have people to look up to, mm-hmm. right? What I've learned, like what you've helped me figure out, is that actually the role models. There's really two reasons. Mm-hmm. One of them is so you can see what's possible. Yes. Right. Okay. You talk about this yeah. story a lot, where mm-hmm. like you know you you didn't know when you were growing up, you didn't know you were in Queens, you didn't really you know you dropped out of college, you didn't know X Y Z was possible. No. Nope. Right. Nope. Now you ha- your kids know things that are possible that you did not know. Yeah. Right? I so had no Googles. No Googles. N- nothing. You know n- none of that stuff. Yeah. The second one though, this has actually been the most powerful one for me. Okay. Is uh to learn what works or doesn't work mm-hmm. from other people, mm-hmm. right? And so like, hey, we're doing, oh my God, we've never done an event. We gotta do our first event here at Drift. Yep. I could figure out how to do it or I could go watch videos and learn from people who have thrown great events yes. and then take that yep. and learn what was good and what was not good. Yep. So to me, that's um, all great stuff. Okay. It all comes down to- What did I miss? Uh, you didn't miss anything there, but I'm gonna take it up one level okay. and say the reason that role models and modeling is important is because we are in a constant fight, mm. all of us, with with our own egos, mm. and uh, and we get to a certain age uh, once we become an adult, and we start to think that we want to invent everything, we want to create stuff, we want everything from scratch, we don't want to do the things that that have been done before, yeah. we don't want to listen to our parents' advice because what do they know? And then you hit a certain level of of maturity, then you're like, you look back and you're like, wow, there were so many things that I had to learn the hard way that I could have learned the easy way, but my ego got in the way. And so what we're all about is shortcutting that. And that's Shortcut. where role models come in because we all have this constant fight. So let me, th- you have the young, young redheaded 
Yes. Red-headed little daughter. Yes. Uh -huh. Follow the IG. Shout follow Dave on. Shout out Annie if you're listening. Yeah, if you want to check out Annie, check out uh, Dave Gerhardt's <laughs> IG. Uh -huh. That's all that's on there. Uh-huh. 24-7. I want uh, the followers, so <laughs> I post Annie only. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so if you look at Annie, how does Annie learn how to walk? Yeah. Annie learns how to walk by trial and error. Yep. By looking, observing around her, by modeling and seeing what other people are doing, that's how she learns so many of the things that she does is by modeling, mm. right? And um, she doesn't learn how to walk by reading a book. Nope. She doesn't learn how to, no one has to give her instructions on how to learn to walk. She's modeling behavior that she sees in others and she's emulating. Yeah. That's where modeling comes in. And uh, so we all model, but we get up to a point in life where we stop modeling and stop uh, and start being stubborn. And then we figure out that we finally, the shortcut is to model, right? The thing that we knew all along. And so I never knew, no one ever told me about role models or I didn't even know what that was. Uh, and now I can see like, wow, we model so many things in life. Let's take a deliberate framework approach, a systematic approach to learning by using role models. I love that. I, so back in last year back in the spring i think it was march april mm -hmm. elias and i met we were lucky enough to meet with the cmo of facebook mm -hmm. in his office wow incredible experience and he said we said we were like what what do we ask this guy? like I, elias and I before the meeting are like he's like do you have questions you better get some questions so yeah like, yeah okay yeah. so we said to him we said what are the traits of the best marketers and he said the best marketers learn faster than everybody else Oof. And that, I think, insert marketer for whatever job you are. If you can learn fast, that's why role models are so important. If you can learn faster than everybody else, yeah. you're going to be more successful. Mm -hmm. Because if you learn faster, you can put the new ideas into play faster. Yeah. You can learn what didn't work faster. You can avoid the mistakes faster. So that line, I've thought about that line a lot since then, which is, I think, true in so many different roles. Wow. And so one of the hard, I love that. One of the hard things um, in figuring all this out is identifying who would be a good role true. model. Right. And I was listening to my uncle, um, Warren Buffett, mm. again, recently. I listened yeah. to him on repeat. Uh -huh. And he was, uh, he was giving this talk at, um, I forgot what the school was in California, old talk on YouTube. And he was saying that his mentor taught him this lesson, right? And he uses it all, all the time when he talks to students. And he's trying to teach them on how to select, how to find the right fit in a person. And he said, imagine this experiment. Imagine uh, where Dave went to college, if he were to look into his class, yep. or where he went to high school, and he would say, Dave, you could, you can pick one person in this class who you can get 10% of their earnings, of whatever money they make for the rest of their lives, forever, but you can only choose one person. How would you choose that person? And, and what, I was gonna shortcut it for you, and what Warren says, and his mentor told him, was that it's never gonna be based on tangibles. It's not gonna be the captain of the football team that you're gonna choose. It's not gonna be the, the person who had all the straight A's in class. It's gonna be someone that stands out to you because of their intangibles. Mm. Something that's intangible, that you can't put your finger on. Yeah. Something that stands out, that's weird, that's special about this person, and they stand out. And so the reason I bring this up today, and I was, I was recording that little rant for a little secret project I'm working on. Okay. I'll tell the people about that, a little bit more of that later. Okay. Um, but uh, that is important in this, what we're talking about, which is selecting your role model. Yeah. So when you're selecting for your role models, you don't only want to look at their quantifiable things. You want to do what Warren Buffett said. You want to look beyond that and look for the intangibles. What is the thing that makes them special in selecting that role model? I love that. This is, there's a thousand articles and episodes just from this alone. Right here, right here. Um, on, on another thing, I forget what book this was from. We read this book. Uh, it might have been Tools to Titans, but he talk, Tim Ferriss talks about, I think, he, I think he, who was the, he had the like Admiral, was it uh, McChrystal or yeah. McRaven? It was one of those guys, right? McChrystal. Uh, McChrystal. Mm -hmm. Shout out to you, Stanley McChrystal. I think he's been in the news lately. Um, uh, and he said he had great advice on, mm -hmm. on picking, he, here was his framework for picking role models. You want three. Number one is find somebody who's doing the same thing you're doing today, okay. because that becomes your peer, peer, peer group slash therapy, right? Number two is find someone who's one level ahead of you, mm. so you can kind of see the map to like mm -hmm. get to the next level, mm -hmm. and then find somebody who's like multiple levels ahead mm -hmm. of you, right? Mm -hmm. So then you can see what it's gonna take, what the elite levels look like. I like that as a Ooh, framework. That's a great framework. It's very simple, right? Mm -hmm. You need three, and here's the three. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's role models. Those are the good kind. 
you also taught me about reverse role models. Can mm -hmm. you can you can you rebring the lesson of reverse <laughs> role models to light for the for the people? Yeah, the uh, I think that we did an episode on this a long time ago, yeah. and it was uh, I had sent DG out. He was he, he had been invited to some. One of my some, this is one of my favorite stories. Some dinner, yes. some event, some whatever, and he was nervous about going. He was didn't want to go, and uh, and or, or something like that. And so I was pushing him to go, and I said it's important you go to this thing. And I think maybe I was invited to him, and yeah. then I, I, I this gave is how time. I this is how I came up a little bit, which is these people in the early days drift people invite DC to still invite DC to all this stuff. He says he can't go. I get to Always. go, yeah. and it's amazing. And so this example was a, CMO it, a group of all. It was a CMO dinner at dinner, some fancy dinner. restaurant in Cambridge, and yeah, I'm yeah, showing fancy. up in my Nikes and a backpack, and, yeah, yeah, and, and walking hoodie. in. I'm like, "Are you sure you want me to go to this?" <laughs> and he was like, "Yeah, I want you to go." Yeah, I was like, but I didn't tell him why. Okay, so I was just like, "You, you need to go to this thing." So he went. He came <coughs> back, and then uh, this was our first office. I remember. Yep. And so I was asking, "What did he think about that dinner?" So I didn't tell him anything else, and he was he was saying some stuff, and uh, about it, but I could tell that he he didn't really want to tell me what was on his mind. And then I finally said, "Hey, the reason I sent you to that is because I wanted you to look at reverse role models. Those are all CMOS there, all muckety mucks, fancy dinners and all that stuff. Muckety mucks, uh, well, fancy everything. <laughs> uh, but how much do they know?" And he was like, "They didn't know that much, or they didn't know that much more, I should yeah. say." all accomplished people. Yeah. And I said, that's a reverse role model, right? That is what you want to look at. You wanted to see uh, what it takes to get to that level, but you also wanted to see how you want to be different from that group. Because yeah. that's not the That was such an unlocking thing, because it was like, you go there, you think you're going to be in a different league, and you realize, wait a second, this isn't that different. This isn't that crazy. Yeah, they're definitely no more. They definitely have more experience, but it's not that crazy, no. right? It's like you know, getting it. If you play basketball, you get in a pickup game with a bunch of NBA players, and you're very, you're like, okay, I can, I can hang, right? Mm -hmm. It's, it's some level of that. And so, in my notes, I put like reverse role models is one of the things to, to have to help you overcome. Everybody has this imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. I think reverse role models is one of the things that helps you figure out what's possible. Totally, and you need a, you need because you need. You need contrast. Yeah. You always need to have contrast. You have to understand what does great look like and uh, what does good look like and what is not good look like. It's also, I think, one of the reasons why we, we love talking about and reading like founder stories is because mm -hmm. you realize, oh, this person didn't have much. No. And look at what they did. Totally. And so therefore, you can do it. That's number two. Number three is the new one. Do you remember the new one? Anti-role anti models. Anti -role models. Mm -hmm. What is an anti-role model? Anti-role model is, going to is, is about showing you what not to do. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So the anti-role models, which is a new one, this is the third type. I'm locking, I, you know, sometimes- We needed I, it. The sometimes, rule of threes. Sometimes I think, just give too much, give too much away. I don't know. Some of this, we got to, yeah. G2, put a paywall behind this part. This should yeah. be paid. This, the rest of this podcast like, is going to be six ninety nine. Give, just give a free, subscription. free all the time. Free. But I'll give you the anti-role okay. model because anti I love the model? peoples. Okay. Uh, so the anti-role models is, you want to know uh, what behaviors uh, don't lead. This is kind of inversion. This is basically mm. Charlie Munger's inversion. So Charlie Munger's inversion, what he says is, look, if you have a goal in mind, you want to get to this. G2 wants to be some muckety muck, big time. Um, if you want to be the muckety muck, what you want to do is invert and say, not what will it take for me to be yeah. the muckety muck, yeah. or what, what do you want to be, G2? World famous director Casey Neistat. Casey, Casey Neistat. Yeah, he wants to be Casey Neistat. Yeah. So uh, instead of saying, "What are the steps that I need to do?" Because those are hard to predict. To be Casey Neistat, yeah. you say the opposite. You invert. You say, "What are the things that if I do, I know I will definitely never be Casey Neistat." And then you go down that list, and then you can basically come out with a things, a list of things that you should never do, never pursue, because they will never lead you to your goal. And so the anti-role model is this. It's like, okay, find the people who are, who are exhibiting the traits mm. that never lead to the thing that you want, right? So like uh, people who may say, in this case, let's say you wanted to be um, Casey Neistat. People who may tell you for years that they want to be Casey Neistat, but they've never made any progression towards it. Yeah. And so you take that group of people, create this anti-role model group and say, what is in common with those people? I'd say the universal one that Charlie Munger says always, always is going to be in the anti-role model when you invert is uh, laziness and sloth, mm. right? Like if you don't 
put in any work. You, you're just a slob. Yeah. I think he calls it something else. But it's, it's I love basically that because then there's, that gives you somewhere to build, right? Yeah, yeah. So in the Casey Neistat example, it's like Casey was not lazy. He was not a sloth. Um, he he created ten videos every single week. Okay, he didn't so, wait for permission. Yep. You can start to make this little recipe book of like, mm -hmm. okay, here are the guardrails, right? Yeah. Like, if you've ever tried, one of, one of the things that I, I like that you do is like, when we try to solve a problem, you, you go up on the whiteboard and you write the guardrails, yeah. right? And this is almost like anti-role models is the guardrails, okay? Totally. In, in order to like, we talk about this with pricing a lot, right? Mm -hmm. when, we're, when you guys are creating new pricing, you always write like, has to be simple, has to be customer friendly. Yeah. And so that then gives you some framework to like, how you're gonna write out the pricing. Yeah, there's so with, many things in the Casey Neistat example, like, with Go the on. young G2 being a Casey Neistat, wanting to be it, that most people would fall into. What are the things that Casey Neistat uh, doesn't do? He doesn't obsess around equipment, right? He doesn't care, he, mm. he, he doesn't care. He often makes it a, a, a point to say the equipment doesn't matter, mm -hmm. right? Like, uh, mm -hmm. he doesn't care about, you know, how he looks or how he comes across, right? Like, there's all these things that usual people who want to do that kind of that kind of work g2 is not one of these people but one of those people get caught up in equipment caught up in the way that they look not want to do anything embarrassing wait for them to be selected into some fancy whatever yeah. wait, you know, wait for ideas he has ideas. ideas he make he can make a video about a notebook right yes. it could be anything mm -hmm. and it's all about storytelling right Th those are the things that are correlated that, with it oh you got there all the way because of inversion yes inversion and the anti role model so g2 we're giving you too much stuff. We're educating the young G2 too much. That's it. Just like that, we're running late today because of we're me. We're running late. Sorry we need six-star reviews. We, need we six still have reviews. a shortage. I don't know what's going if on. If you are, look, is this is, could be your Thanksgiving call to action, right? You know? This Some days it. I wake up and I'm like, just let's just wrap up the podcast because I can't get a six-star <laughs> review around here. Let's retire it. Let's just retire it. Let's retire it. G2, we're going to shut down we'll the podcast. We'll go out on top. Actually, okay. we wouldn't be on top because we don't get reviews anymore. Yeah. Because I don't get it. There's no reviews anymore. Oh, your app's broken. Yeah, the app is broken in the Apple I Store, uh, App Store. We're going to have to mix it up. Uh, we give, 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 give. I don't want to ask, but maybe maybe a six-star review? Yeah. Soon? Please. Please? All right. Happy Thanksgiving, Happy everybody. Thanksgiving. You'll Just joking with everyone. Six, seeking Wisdom is going nowhere. Six-star reviews only. See ya. Uh, see ya. Peace.